What's going on everybody? This is Tetro and today I'm going to be talking to you about how I switched from a Windows Ultrabook to a MacBook Pro. Let's check it out. Alright, first things first, if you enjoy live electronic music performances, tutorials, and sound packs for free, subscribe to the channel. And be sure to follow me on my other social media including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates daily. All right, let's get on with the show. Okay, first things first, why did I switch in the first place? I've been a Windows user since I was a little kid. All of my laptops for production have been Windows laptops. But two blue screens of death later and the risk of losing all my files, I was ready to move on. The production community has pretty much spoken. I was one of the largest defenders of Windows for music production. You know, you can do everything that you can do with a MacBook Pro on a Windows. And to some extent that's true, but you just don't have the stability of a MacBook with a Windows PC. Ultimately, the operating system is why I switched. One thing I noticed right off the bat after I switched was the build quality difference. Now with the Ultrabooks, they definitely try to go for a MacBook Pro type vibe with an aluminum casing that makes it nice and solid and metal. And I thought that was great until I held an actual MacBook Pro. The build quality just was not the same on the Windows. It did have the nice aluminum casing, but the screen was plasticky and actually wiggled a little bit if you just moved the computer. When you hold a MacBook Pro, it feels solid and like it's one piece of metal. The display was also another huge upgrade, and I did downgrade in display size. I went from a 14-inch Lenovo Ultrabook to a 13-inch MacBook Pro, and I thought that would have some sort of difference, but the Retina display on the MacBook Pro makes up for it tenfold. But don't make this a priority when you're purchasing a computer for music production. Two things I realized really quickly once I got the MacBook Pro. A, I didn't have that terabyte of hard drive storage that I was so used to having, and B, I have not enough USB ports. I went from having four USB ports on the Lenovo Ultrabook to two now on the MacBook Pro. And what that means is I just have to change up what I carry with me every day, so I definitely carry a four USB hub with me to make sure that I can plug in all my controllers, a launch pad, push, launch control, it all adds up and it definitely goes over to really quick. And of course I need space to plug in a hard drive, which brings me to my next point. I used to have one terabyte of storage on my Lenovo Ultrabook, and now I'm at 128 gigabytes on the MacBook Pro, which I figured, oh, that would be fine. No. So getting used to using an external hard drive and always carrying that around is a bit of an adjustment. Now I bought a one terabyte drive that I just carry with me everywhere. There are actually a few different ways you can use an external hard drive with Ableton. And there's a great forum post on the Ableton website that takes you through how to use an external hard drive with Live. It breaks down three ways. One, you can import your Ableton Live library onto an external hard drive so all your instruments are on the external drive. Or you can use it as a project file database so all your project files are on the external a hard drive or a third way you can put all your plugins and VSTs on the hard drive and load them from there the forum seems to suggest that you should use three external hard drives one for each of these functions but I found even just using one has freed up my hard drive memory a ton when converting from PC to Mac format your external drive so that it can be used with both PC and Mac before you switch from your old machine to your new machine be sure to make sure all your Ableton live sets and all your Ableton files are in one place especially for the projects you want to transfer over. What you'll find is if you don't make sure you do this, some of your projects when you convert them will be missing some random files, MIDI files, audio files, and it won't be able to find them. Sometimes Ableton will save things and put them in a temporary recorded folder if you haven't saved the live set. And if you don't gather all of the files in Ableton's file management, they'll be left on your old machine and they won't come over with the project file. Registering Ableton on a new machine isn't difficult at all, especially if you haven't registered on more than one machine before. Ableton gives you a number of registration licenses so you can register on a few different computers as long as you're not using them simultaneously. Well, I've had a few computers and also a work computer, which means I maxed out my registration codes. No huge problem. What I ended up having to do was email Ableton, let them know my situation. Hey, I'm not using these other computers anymore, but I'm out of registration codes. Can you help? And they gladly sent along a registration code and they just said, anytime you need to register a computer here on out, you just have to go through the email service. But it did take about two days over a weekend for them to get me a new registration code. 
battery life. I was so thrilled to switch to the MacBook Pro and know that I would have at least 12 hours of working battery life, unlike the Lenovo Ultrabook when I would have to plug in every four hours at least. So are you an Ableton user and do you use a MacBook Pro or a Windows? And was I the last Windows Ableton user to exist? I don't see myself going back anytime soon. All the features that we talked about are just a total upgrade from what I was working with before. I thought I could get by on Windows and I just could not anymore. Are you in the same boat? Are you getting by on Windows? Do you feel good about Windows? Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more live performances, tutorials, and free sound packs. If you found this video helpful or you think a friend will find it helpful, be sure to share it and tag me on social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This has been Tedro. Have a good one.